Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. Welcome back. We're here in episode two of five in the series about creating a work positive culture that increases productivity and profits. And today our guest is Dr. Joey of Work Positive Today. How you doing, Dr. Joey? I am marvelous. How about yourself, Wendy? Fantastic, fantastic. I cannot complain. I am helping people put out fires left and right, HR <laughs> fires, I should say. And uh, you mentioned, er, you know, about like the pandemic and that we're finally uh, realizing like, hey, we got to invest in our people. And I, for mm. one, am loving it. I really hate that it, it took the pandemic to, you know, yeah. make that happen. It but is, I also wanted is. to, you know, say something that you were talking about. Uh, what are we going to do? You know, are we going to retire? Are we not? Are we going to golf? And I was uh, doing uh, indoor golf the other day, uh, top uh -huh. golf, which I've uh -huh. only done like once ever in my life. I'm horrible at it. Yeah, and of course, cool experience. <laughs> it is a very cool experience. Um, I personally was there for the wine, but you know, anyway, <laughs> so I was. People were offering like, hey, let's go uh, teach you how to play golf. I said, no, no, no. That that is my. I'm holding that off for retirement. I'm like, because I don't have, from what I understand about golf is you end up being competitive with yourself and I am very competitive. So I'm like, no, 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 this has to hang. We're, we're, we're pushing that off into retirement so I could find something to be passionate about, except for HR guys. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I, That's what I'm thinking. Let me know how that works out for you, Wendy. <laughs> right. Hey, JC, what do you got with us for statistics? You know, interestingly, leveraging our first discussion and kicking off this one right here, 95% of employees believe that culture is more important than even compensation. 94% mm -hmm. of executives and 88% of employees believe that a, a positive workplace culture is essential for business success and a positive culture, believe it or not, leads to a 30% higher customer satisfaction level all the way around. And organizations with strong cultures, they will see four times revenue growth compared to people that aren't growing revenue at all. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Joey? Oh, absolutely correct, JC. I know you're, you know, you're right, JC, but um, <laughs> I'm just telling you, I know you're right too. <laughs> So what we see is up to 31% increase in productivity, which when you look at that number, it's actually larger than that. And here's what I mean. Um, Gallup's last poll found that about 85% of American workers are not engaged fully. So just think about the yeah. billions of dollars that are lost there. I mean, like 223 billion or so lost annually. Innovation, creativity, which should be our competitive advantage or loss. So in a global economy, that's more significant than it has been in any other time. To JC's point about income, 19% increase in operating income with companies that are growing a positive work culture. And a 28%, which is right there in line with your four times, 28% uh, annual growth in revenue over wow. year to year. So. The, the challenge, though, JC, <laughs> with all those statistics is what are we doing in our companies to create a positive work culture? And people just kind of freak out and go, oh, it's such a big, hairy, audacious goal. I can't do that. Well, OK, maybe you can't in a day. However, small hinges swing big doors. That happens to be the title of a book I wrote. <laughs> it's a bestseller. Small hinges swing big doors. So there are daily activities, and that's what that little less than 100-page book is all about. Daily activities you can do today to begin creating a positive work culture. Also, my last book was Do One Thing, and I took my own podcast, the Work Positive Podcast, and pulled insights. I call them dot insights, dot being do one thing, dot sites, to help people find handles to grab hold of from these experts that are on my podcast to say, here's something you can do today. So I always conclude my podcast with, hey, JC, hey, Wendy Sellers, what's one thing Work Positive Nation can do today to begin creating a positive work culture? We can all do one thing. Now, we may not all be b haggers, but we can all do one thing today to start to create it. So just know it is possible 
to have a positive work culture, even if you're the only person around, you'll create a ripple effect. Just do one thing yourself and control what you can. I love that. Do one thing yeah. and do it again and do it again and do That's it again. A, uh, well, my friend, Dr. Ivan Meisner, the founder of BNI, says it's better to do six things a thousand times than a thousand things six times. Right. So, uh, you know, it, it, you just keep repeating those things over and over and they begin to get traction. And that ripple effect literally changes and transforms organizations for the better. Dare I say I one it. good first step is just making sure you make your bed in the morning, but I digress. <laughs> That's the military speaking. <laughs> yeah, somebody made that uh, really popular, right? <laughs> Daco, was that, was that who was? Or, you know, yeah, no, it was, you know. It was the other guy. My wife uh, brought me that video one day off YouTube. She says, you got to watch this. Her dad was third gen Navy, right? You got to watch this. You got to watch that. Of course, I'd seen it two years ago, but I just act like it was the first time. Oh, <laughs> good hey, job, that's good great. Job. <laughs> I am so glad you make the bed every morning. <laughs> <laughs> it is though, you know, with the whole making the bed thing, and I admit I don't make the bed every morning, but it, it makes you, you know, if you do it right away, uh, when you wake up, you're like, okay, I've accomplished one thing. Like mm. you just said, do one thing. All right, now yeah. let me do the next thing. That's and maybe right. I've had a little- Success success. So exactly. continue to and- a winning culture. The biggest thing that like I personally am um, really, really trying to do this year, 2024, and I'm saying it out loud so everybody can hold me accountable is cool. to say no, uh, mm-hmm. because I'm not I'm not good at that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just want to help everybody. Well, if I'm exhausted, I can't help you. You know, if mm-hmm. I'm exhausted from helping everybody, so saying no. And I usually go and meet people tonight for for wine and whatnot after my Tuesday podcast. And I already said no, so I'm so happy. I was like, I'm <laughs> well, sorry, I'm going to have to pass. I have a lot on my plate, and I right. really need to get a good night's sleep. Uh, sure. Plus, it's, you know, in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's freezing cold Florida tonight. Well, look, may I suggest that you consider taking the word trying in 2024 out and just say in 2024 i've committed to myself to say no more often and all right power done. just taking that word trying out done i'm absolutely can consider it done i'm taking the word trying out and you know w- one other thing before we wrap up series two here is what about when you're teaching somebody something do one thing and they say i already know that <laughs> yeah, th- those are the four deadly words, uh, Wendy. That's why I'm laughing. Uh, those are four deadly words uh, because they're vanity words. They're ego-driven words. I already know that. Even if you do see yourself as already knowing that, listening to how that person describes the activity and about their experience will enrich yours. So when you begin to do it, you've got another story to play in your head that actually builds credibility for doing that one thing. And so, okay, I'm not by myself in doing this. I've been joined by someone else and there's someone else and someone else. So rather than saying, I already know that, say, please show me how. Those four words are life-giving words. Please show me how. One of the things we help companies with is reverse mentoring because guys my age who are pale and in their 60s, right? Uh, We can learn so much because technology has driven change in so many different ways. So that 27, 28, in my case, 36 and 32-year-old daughters, right, can teach us so much through reverse mentoring. Hey, Dad, did you know about this? Can you do this? For us, it started pretty easily in our family because uh, our older daughter was eight when we got our first VCR. And I didn't know how to program the thing, but she figured it out in about two minutes. So I would just say, hey, Rebecca, I want to watch. I want to record this show at this time. And she'd set it up and do it. So that was reverse mentoring from an elementary school student. So you just have to you, you choose to be teachable and coachable. And that's a growth mindset. I love it. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody, we'll be back shortly with episode three. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.